You know how I'm going to turn it tonight. Oh, that's right. That's right. This is what I forgot. This is LRA. Okay, John. Oh, I only got extra pen. Lynn. Yes, sir. Send me a pen down, please. John, there's some right in front of you. I oh, think. yeah. There you go. See if you like that, and if not, see if I got. Oh yeah, it's hot. Thank you. Is this one better? No, that's okay. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call the meeting to order of the Fort Pickett Local Redevelopment Authority. And bear with me. I'm trying to get some paper straight here. Uh, I need a motion to approve the agenda, please. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any disapprove? All right, agenda is approved. Ladies and gentlemen, need a, I mean, board, uh, authority members, I need a motion to approve the minutes for July 20th and July 25th of 2023. I move to adopt and approve the minutes from LRE meeting July 20th, 2023, and work session held on July 25th, 2023. Can I get a second? I second. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any disapprove? All right, we have adopted the, those minutes with no amendments. Okay, we have a public hearing uh, for the SVCC property conveyance, um, and Mr. Carson is not here tonight. Um, so what we're going to do is we can go ahead and open the public hearing, or if you want to, if you need, need to state anything prior to me opening the public hearing. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, I got a few things. You want me to go over the. Um the agenda, or do you want me to put that off? Uh, no, just for the public hearing. No, sir. Okay. All right, so board members, I need a motion to open the public hearing, please. So moved. Can I second. Get All right, it's been properly moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any disapprove? Okay, we are now at public hearing. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the public, is anybody here to speak for or against the South South Virginia Community College property conveyance, for or against? Okay, seeing none, I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All right, can I get a second? second? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any disapprove? Okay, public hearing is now closed. All right, board members, um, if, if anybody needs any clarification on what exactly or any, any other questions that we may have as far as that piece of property goes um, prior to a motion. Um, you can ask uh, Mr. Hawkins now. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Okay. All right, well, there should be a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Local Redevelopment Authority transfer approximately two and a half acres of land lying east of Southside Virginia Community College property fronting West Kent Street to Southside Virginia Community College at no cost to Southside Virginia Community College. I second that motion. All right, board members, let's have a motion and a proper second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any approved, same sign? I mean, disapproved, same sign? All right, 5 0 vote. That has been taken care of. All right. Do we have any unfinished business, Mr. Hawkins? No, sir. Okay. New business, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, uh, in a previous meeting where we had we had discussed the first Thursdays on the um, even numbered months, which would basically put removing the LRA uh, meetings off of our regular board meeting nights and on to that first Thursday of the even number months, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. What time would they be, Mr. Chairman? That's, that's the, I think that's the only question we have. Do y'all want that at 6 or do y'all want that at 7? That gives you something every Thursday of the month. You'll be looking forward to that five month one. <laughs> oh. That's a Thursday, so. Six is fine with Six, me. It, where would it be held? It'd be EOC Center. Yes, ma'am. I can I can make it by six. 
so six o'clock will be fine. Okay. 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 Okay at 6 p.m. to allow greater focus on attention to the LRA properties. Okay, can we get a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right, that's taken care of. All right, Mr. Hawkins, the lease, T and H Services, LLC. Yes, sir. Um, T and H Services, uh, they're renewing their lease. Mm -hmm. their lease renewal? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm I'd like to do that, and I also have three others. Um, we would do them individually on their own merit. Okay. Please. Yeah, I'd like to do teenage for one more year if possible. And um, the next one's going to be Skookum Contractor Services. Mm -hmm. And then the third one would be uh, Mr. Ronald Frisbee. A veterans car wash and then the fourth one is going to be our um, daycare that is located at the officers club uh, Doris Davis Las correct Davis. Doris Davis yes sir okay all right mr. Hawkins I got one concern yes on, sir on on these items here okay since you dra drafted them all the on the actual contracts themselves there was no prices in the contract what we I signed. noticed that too um, I don't know, this was printed before my time, mm -hmm. um, and I just noticed it earlier today on the way over. Okay. The only one is Mr. Frisbee's monthly. Correct. The other ones, um, I can tell you how much one of them is if you want me to announce. Okay, is, is there any way we could get the price on it and then could we get those added and then all you need to do, if the board approves it, all they need to do is get my signature once we've yes, added sir. that and on I, there? And, I sh and I sh that's an oversight by me. I should have had the um, rent amount on there. Uh, 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 I can do that for you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So, we'll, board members, he'll give us the prices, and then he'll add it, and then if it, we approve, then I'll just sign it one, once we get that added to okay. the documentation. I, I can do that. Um, and that's only on, um, that's for uh, T&H, Doris, and Skookum. Yes, like sir. you said, I, the I, veterans car wash was, was uh, <laughs> that, that uh, price was on there. Mm -hmm. And the one other question I had was on the veterans car wash. <clears throat> Well, you say it's the tenant's responsibility for any uh, accumulation, and, and like I guess, I'm assuming like it's clods and mud and stuff like that. Right. All right. Do we need to be concerned about any runoff concerns or contaminant concerns as far as detergents? As a, for the car wash itself, mm -hmm. it, I, I don't believe so. It's a huge parking lot. Right. And um, it, I don't believe there's enough business at any one time mm -hmm. that there's a concern with that. Okay. And there's drainage ditches actually on three sides of the parking lot. Okay, and that and that's part of the that was part of the reason why I asked where would it be running to. Um, Just want to make sure that we don't have any environmental concern. I want I want to get this done for him. He's, he, yeah, yeah. I understand. Um, it's right across the street from the west gate. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a vacant parking lot. Actually, there's no cars that park in there. There's no parking spaces marked off, and um, the runoff goes into a drainage ditch that runs down Military Road. Mm -hmm. So it drains downwards and, and dissipates into the grass. So, so he's been it, there for some if time. that makes sense. He hasn't had any right. Problems right. Right. Okay. All right. There's yeah. no standing water, no. and I've never seen okay. puddles on that particular parking lot. Okay. So as long as we feel safe, I have no issue. Okay. I have no concerns for the environmental concerns. Sure. I, I have no issues at all. Sure. Okay. I definitely want to. Move, uh, I'm definitely in favor of moving him forward as well. So. Okay. All right. Um, Board members, do y'all have any questions on the uh, the four lease items that he has in front of us? No. Okay. Uh, if if we could, just for the record, could we get a motion per per lease? I will I will read it if you like to move it. Uh, need a lease to approve. What's the cost per month? Uh, seventy five. Uh, seventy five. For for the car wash, yes, sir. Right for the veterans car wash, it's seventy five dollars per month. Could I get a motion for that? So moved. Second. I can tell you how much teenage services is. I have it in front of me. Okay. okay. We'll get to that. All right. All in favor of approving the lease for the veterans call wash is 75 a month. Signify by saying aye. 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 
Any opposed? Okay, you got that taken care of. What is the price that you have there, Mr. I, I just found it written here. It's uh, it's not on the actual um, renewal, but I have it written here, monthly income mm -hmm. at 1500 and that's for TNH services. TNH. All right, so board members, the, could I get a motion to, a, to approve the lease for 1500 a month for TNH services, LLC? I move that the lease for TNH services for $1,500 per month be approved. Second. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we have that taken care of. What should I have? have um, Pickett uh, Park uh, Daycare Center as well with Miss Davis. Okay, and do you have the, the her rent? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, seven forty three seventy six. Forty three seventy six. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve Doris B. Davis in the amount of seven forty three and seventy six cent per month moving forward? I move to approve for Doris B. Davis seven seven hundred forty three dollars and seventy six cent per month. Can I have a second? I second that motion. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, that's taken care of. Now we got. Skookum. Skookum. Yes, sir. It's one thousand even. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, can I get a motion for that? I mean, authority members, can I get a motion for that? I move to approve for Skookum contract services one thousand dollars per month. In a second. 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 All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That takes care of your leases there, um, Mr. Hawkins. Uh, and Mr. Hawkins, at this time, uh, you have a staff report. Is that correct? I do. Um, our monthly total income from uh, commercial, SBI, and residential is thirty-seven, eight hundred eighty-seven and five cents, and that's uh, commercial and residential combined. You said thirty-seven eight eight seven zero five. Yes, sir. All right, informational items. The uh, yes, sir, I have a few lists of projects that we just have worked on through the month. Okay. Month. Um, we had tankless water heaters installed at three of our um, apartment buildings, uh, Picket Lodge. Mm -hmm. uh, they were um, tankless water heaters with propane. That's been done. Um, it was a long drawn out procedure, but it's completed. And residents are extremely happy about that. Um, <laughs> We have two parties that are interested in renting building 2357, which is a single story um, vacant uh, military barracks with one bay door, yes, garage sir. door. Um, and the talk was anywhere from 500 to 600 a month. Okay. So um, one is an auto detailing company, mm -hmm. and the other is um, an auto wash company, like tinny windows and detailing cars. Okay. Um, so we're in, they both looked at the building, and I haven't heard back from them yet, but um, if I do, I'll let you know next meeting. Okay. Um, the second is um, we have completed our move from the old LRA office to the officers club, which is the old planning office. That yes, move sir. happened mm -hmm. last week. Um, it's a better, more professional setting. Uh, and it's a, it was a good move for us. Yes, sir. Um, I'm in the process of getting bids for six parcels of uh, timber outside Fort Barfoot um, for possible future um, sale. Mm -hmm. I'm contacting different parties for uh, to get uh, timber costs uh, for for the timber on that. Um, I had an emergency repair on Teenage Services building we just talked about. I had to get a chimney taken down. Mm -hmm. It was about to fall, so that's been completed. Um, I guess because of the weather, um, we've had a number of HVAC units go out. One of them being the Officers Club. Um, so our budget kind of went through the roof on the HVAC repair. Um, I think we're over. I think we're over it now. If we are on top of it. Um, and one thing I wanted to request is, and I'd spoke with the previous assistant um, administrator, um, Katie Tomer, uh, a while back, um, is getting approved for our own credit card for LRA. Right now, if I have to do any purchases outside of ordering online, mm -hmm. um, I literally have to come up and get a credit card, take it with me like to Lowe's or anywhere or Home Depot and bring it back and give it back again. And um, it's kind of very inconvenient to have to do that. I would like to know if we could get our own credit card for our own agency uh, for okay. myself or one more party to have on us. Okay, board members, can, uh, can, if you don't mind, can you hold up right there? Absolutely. Um, that, that is something that we, we can take action on and, and uh, give him an answer on tonight if that is something 
Yeah. We do. I mean, it's put a it's limit just, on it. Yeah. What limit would you require, ma'am? What limit would you require? What amount? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A limit. limit. A limit. I would say limit five thousand. I don't think we need more than five thousand. That way, I can be accountable. Anything beyond that would be something I would probably go uh, to the administrator on a bigger purchase than that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's actually 4999 is the limit. And after that, that's the protocol for um, purchases anyway. You're, so you're, you're talking about the to, um, procurement procedure? Procur yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So if it was that, 5000 or less, we're within that, that procedure. All right, board members, um, authority members, I'm sorry. Do we, um, do we feel like we should do our due diligence anyway, even though that value is under that, to check the rates, in other words, apply and bring that back to us? Mm -hmm. If you, um, however you want me to proceed. What do y'all think? Or what do they get a rate? Can they get a card off the county? They should be able to. Well, it would be off. Well, I don't know. Oh, that's right. No, this is LRA. It's separate. It's LRA. It's separate. separate. Yeah. That's right. Do they have an account established? Do y'all have an account established locally with a local bank or anything? Or I don't know at? how that's. <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I don't know because I would just get issued the card from the administrative office and bring it back. And... When the bill came in, I think it just got separated and billed under LRA. Oh, whoa, I don't know whoa, who's. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, this is supposed. To, it's a county this, card. It's not individually. It's not an LRA us. card. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to clarify yeah. a few things before we vote on yeah. those. Right. That yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's why it's kind of touchy. I don't know how to right. proceed on that. We'll we'll, um, we'll do some digging on that. We'll be in touch with you. We'll okay. we'll, we'll move as quickly as we okay. can on that to uh, shore that up for you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, I'll be getting bids for a new roof on, um, I mentioned it a few months ago, but we had so many things going on. Um, we have two shops at the um, LRA um, property, and one of them is specifically for our tractors and lawnmowers, and you can literally see daylight through three or four parts of the roof, and we have water on the floor constantly. In the wintertime, it ices up, mm -hmm. um, and it's just we have so many priorities, we've been throwing tarps over it, and I think it's time to finally repair that roof and not throw tarps on the Right. So I'm just going to get bids for that and submit that in the future. Well, it's got to be taken care of. Sir. Or either the whole building be, end up being replaced next. We don't yeah. need the maintenance yes, on sir. it. And, and, yes, sir. And, yes. And I'm estimating probably eight to 10000 I'm just That's me estimating, if I had to guess. So um, unless we can get a really good deal, materials have gone up so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last item I have, um, I think it was the last uh, last minute turn in on the report that um, South Side Virginia Community College, um, one of the directors, Mary Ellen, um, we met at one of our vacant um, army barracks that's next to our student housing for <coughs> South Side Virginia Community College. They have expressed a need for more student housing. They're, they're turning students away because the students can't find housing in the area to attend the college. Um, and they don't want to go to motels and no one wants to sign short-term leases and we're just out of um, Units with Pickett Lodge. We, we don't have enough units there. We have one um, Single-story unit that's designated for for females only there's six units in there and then the other male unit I believe has 19 units in it and it's a two-story Right next to it is a vacant um, single-story unit that can be converted over and I believe in 2017 or 2018, LRA worked hand-in-hand -hand with Southside Virginia Community College to renovate that for housing for students. So I believe it was around a 50000 mark, mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. So they have talked about contributing a large portion of that money. So we can, uh, I believe around 75% was the number we talked about. And we would send out an invitation to bid. Mm -hmm. for other contractors and I would follow the exact same protocol they did for this renovation I would I would mirror how they did it and follow that procedure well authority members uh, mr. Vaughn miss Simmons y'all were here when they'd done that before it was, did that seem like a pretty seamless process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what, what, do we, what do we need to get from you before we move forward with anything um, I will evaluate the building and assess it mm -hmm. uh, and I've already did a preliminary I think it's a good structure to start with and okay. it just coincidentally is beside the building that we need anyway okay um, and there's a building to the right of it that's a vacant two-story army barracks mm -hmm. but it's too many units we don't want to put that kind of money into it that was about hundred fifty thousand dollar repair okay. we don't need that many units if we can get six to eight units that's our overflow it seems to be in the past year that's okay. so always six to eight students we turn away 
Okay. So I think it's a great alternative, and, and they are very interested. They already did a tour with us of the building and said they're all for doing it if we wanted to move forward. All right. In, in the talks of it, you know, negotiations of it. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, it, I'd, I'd be all in favor of uh, getting getting with them and getting some uh, information and seeing which direction we could go with it. Or what do y'all think? Mm -hmm. okay. It kind of goes hand in hand with the property that we're um, relieving to South Side because they're going to expand their buildings and classes to, I believe, solar repair mm -hmm. and fiber optic fiber optic repair. Yes. So they're going to need more student housing because of that. Okay, and uh, Mr. Hawkins on yes, number sir. number five. Yes, sir. Uh, I think I think we did we skip over that. The commercial oh, development. So, I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I did. Um, myself, um, Mr. Zodi, and Mr. Costin met with a local. Um, I'm sorry, a, uh, a firm out of Richmond, um, a developer, mm -hmm. and we did a little quick tour of the properties uh, of LRA, and um, they are in the business of renovating. Um, remodeling and developing commercial and residential properties, be mm -hmm. it residential apartments, multifamily, or commercial properties. And the young gentleman that came out with us has a background in that type of work, and he thought there was possibilities out there at the property to develop some of the buildings, almost like the student housing, but on a, um, conventional apartments, mm -hmm. some commercial units, and make a more income for the, um, for the LRA and the county. So I am trying not to laugh because I hear a chicken. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. No, I'm sorry. I'm That's okay. That. okay. All right. So, it, it, that completes your report. There was there any? You've already gave us the income. Oh, the club income. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, let's find it real quick for you. Uh, year, uh, this month is, well, year to date is 10300 Okay. And, All right. um, and the quarter was 7425 mm -hmm. And um, the officers Club is really busy a lot. It, we have two more busy months coming up where they're back-to-back. Okay. -back. So I anticipate meeting the same income level at the end of the year. Uh, probably a little more. They're actually getting more events as the year gets, ro rolls in. Okay. Okay. All right. Authority members, do you all have any questions for Mr. Hawkins? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins, as always. And um, I'm sure we'll be in conversation yes, sir. before then, but, but um, we will see you October. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank have you. Thank you. Uh, authority members, I need a motion to close the meeting, please. So I Can I get, All right. It's been... Uh, Motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned. Ladies and gentlemen, we have sign-up sheets right there for delegations to the public and the four public hearings that are going to be held tonight. And um, Please, if you want to sign up to be heard and speak on any of those items, including delegations from the public, we ask that you come forward and sign that document that's at the podium now. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, guys, I'm going to mic up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave the, uh, the sign-up sheet down here for a few more minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and call the meet to order since it's after 7. Uh, anybody who is, has not signed up, well now, anybody who has not signed up, like I said, I'll leave it down here for a few more minutes because... It, the podium was unavailable due to an LRA meeting uh, uh, until about 10 minutes to 7. I, I, I'll call, it, it, you can because you want to speak on the uh, duplex public hearing, is that correct? Yes, you can sign or either I know you want to speak. We'll get you up, okay? All right, board members. I got a piece of paper here. Someone tell me what to do next. <laughs> here we go. All right. It's called to order. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Leroy Bradshaw. See, oh, there you are. So, sorry. I'm sorry. So many people in the room tonight. Uh, Mr. Bradshaw is going to give us our invocation for the night. Thank you for joining us, sir, and greatly appreciate you coming in and doing this Thank for us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Let's pray. <clears throat> As it is written, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And so we think and speak and move and are here, not on our time. This is God's time. You, we have nothing to do with it except to follow the one that created us all. As, Lord, you have spoken in Scripture, before you were conceived in the womb, I knew you. And I had plans for you. Speaking to Jeremiah, the Bible is not a book. It is about relationships. Lord, as we are gathered here tonight, that is about relationships. So, Lord, if we trust in you and lean not into our own understanding, then everything will be at peace. I pray for the peace, your peace upon this meeting, upon this county, upon America. May you bless it. May you honor it. May you continue in it. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Brash. I greatly appreciate that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. 
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, I like that. Y'all said that with authority. Good, good stuff there. Good stuff there. All right, uh, board members and uh, public, um, Mr. Costin is not with us tonight, um, but I ask for approval of the agenda, and as we get to any items that we may not be able to address, we will deal with it at that point. So uh, if we could, I'd like to get a motion to approve the agenda unless there's any changes we need to uh, speak on. I saw one. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Mo uh, agenda's approved. Need approval for the minutes for the previous board meeting. So okay. moved. All right. I'll take um, Mr. Ingram's motion second. and Mrs. Simmons' second to approve the minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody out there opposed? No, I'm just kidding. We go. <laughs> Mr. Vaughn, I got your microphone. This thing keeps falling off. This is yours. You switch with me. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, government is one of the ugliest things in the world. But at certain times, we get to do something like we're fixing to do right now. Um, I am going to read some names of some players and coaches, and I ask y'all to hold your applause till one time, okay? So we can we'll go ahead and get through it because they all deserve the hardest applause we can possibly give them. This is the 2023 Dixie World Series champion from uh, right here in Nottoway County, the Nottoway Dixie Ponytails X-Play softball team, the players. And if I mispronounce your name, your parents didn't give it to me, so. You just, you know, we'll blame it on them, okay? So, uh, uh, young ladies, Miss Hayden Hudson, Autumn Atkins, Brooklyn Atkinson, Meadow Austin, Brooklyn Thomas, Layla Dorn, Jayden Banks, Reagan Tucker, Victoria Christopher, Callie Hudson, Elena Anthony, Olivia Spradlett. Y'all please give these ladies a hand as they join us up front here. We have coaches, Mr. John Austin and Charlie Atkinson. Please join us, sir. And I saved this cat for last because I know this cat. Manager Dale Hudson, please join us, sir. See, I had to make you sweat that out a little bit because, you know, we go way back and anything. Let me put this thing on. So, y'all bear with me. This is not Mr. Vaughn rattling candy paper either. This is me. Did y'all like you on the microphone? <laughs> he gets blamed for that all the time. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have a resolution that if y'all bear with me, I would like to read and give a copy to each one of y'all. Y'all okay with that? You earned it. All right. So, let's see here. This is a resolution recognizing the Nottoway Dixie Ponytails X-Play softball team. And uh, <clears throat> you might want to read it. I might get a little emotional. <laughs> anyway, um, bear with me. Whereas the Nottoway Dixie Ponytails X-Play softball team came together as a team following the 2023 Dixie Youth League softball season and Whereas the Nottoway Dixie Ponytails X-Place softball team displayed good sportsmanship, hard work, and dedication, and proudly represented Nottoway County and the Virginia in a positive manner, and whereas the Nottoway Dixie Ponytails X-Place softball team were undefeated in the District 1 tournament played in Dinwiddie, Virginia, advancing to the Virginia State Dixie Youth League Girls Softball Tournament in Charlotte Courthouse, Virginia, and Whereas the Nottoway Dixie Ponytails X-Play softball team won five or six games in the state tournament, claiming the title of Virginia State Champions, and whereas the Nottoway Dixie Ponytails X-Play softball team advanced to the Dixie World Series held in Alexandria, Louisiana, 
representing the Commonwealth of Virginia and Ottawa County as Virginia State Champions and defeated teams from Tennessee, Louisiana, North Carolina, and South Carolina to win the 2023 Dixie World Series. <laughs> hold on, hold on, there's more, there's more. It's just an emotional night for me. <clears throat> now, therefore, <clears throat> be it resolved that the Nottawa County Board of Supervisors <clears throat> hereby formally recognizes and congratulates the 12 Nottawa Dixie Ponytails X Play softball team members, their coaches, and manager for completion of a successful and unforgettable postseason post effort and be it further resolved that the Nottawa County Board of Supervisors expresses the county's appreciation to the players, coaches, and manager for the positive recognition that the Nottaway Dixie Ponytails X Play softball team has brought to Nottaway County and urges all the citizens to reflect upon the work ethic, sacrifice, focus, and friendship that enabled the team to become the 2023 Dixie World Series champion approved this day, the 16th day of August in 2023, and no one can take this away from y'all. <laughs> No, 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 no. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good man. There you go, brother. Right, brother, pretty <laughs> good. I'm going to shake y'all's hand. How about this? Y'all okay with that? Because y'all don't know me. I'm just an ugly old man. <laughs> there you go, dear. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. I, could, I love this. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Whew. And y'all, it, it, I'm, I'm so emotional about this because Dale and I go way back. I know these cats from ever. And I watched my daughter come through here as well. And... Uh, Because, because of what this organization helped my daughter do, she leaves for college tomorrow. <laughs> She's going to be playing softball. <laughs> and I, I tell y'all that not to deflect because this is your night. I tell y'all that hoping that that's encouragement because you can do what she's done and many others have done. Listen to your parents and these cats right here. <laughs> Get good grades, and you'll go anywhere you want to do. Let sports and your academics and your parents and God be your guide and light. I'll leave you with four words. Be humble, be kind, be honest, and do your job. Thank you, Thank you man. Thank you. I need y'all steady hands on that. It eats me up. Ooh. All right. Can, can we get the sheets, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move forward now on the agenda with the uh, delegations from the public. And again, yes, ma'am. The last player, you didn't shake her hand. That was Victoria I, I, Christopher. I'm you gave sorry. her the paper, and I snapped the picture. And just I am so her. sorry. I, I, I totally missed that. I'm so sorry. I would gladly do that. Okay. Victoria. Sorry. Victoria. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Is she coming back? I think she's coming. There she is. There she is. Is that her? Is that Victoria? Hey. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Congratulations again. Thank you. All right. All right. Delegations from the public. Mr. Warren Wade.
Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Warren Wade from Crew, Virginia. And I was here about a month ago, and we talked about solar farms. Now we have open mic, and I want to talk about some other things. Okay. A year, uh, excuse me, two years ago, is my understanding in the newspaper from last month, that there was a survey done in the county about what the citizens here want. First thing on the agenda was they want to remain a rural area, which I'm 100% in, in to that. I think a rural area is a good area. I come from a rural area, but now that area is developed up. I can't live there anymore. Oh, there was a list of things that they did want, though. And I hate to say this, you haven't come through for them. The first thing they want is a grocery store. You either drive to Blackstone, you can drive to Amelia, you can drive to Kenbridge or Farmville. The closest one's 20 miles from my house. So by the time I drive there, get my groceries, drive back, the cold stuff is getting warm, not good. There's a lot of things that I have to eat, I'm on a diet, and I can't get there. I have to have, there's no place in this town I can get the fresh vegetables and fruits and the meat that I need. Now being someone that in the past three months has been out here on the streets and roads of this county, as you know I'm running for the, for the Board of Supervisors, and I've spoken with about everyone in District 3. And grocery store was the first thing they need. And the reason being, a lot of them don't have cars. They don't have a way to get to the grocery store. And I take that back because there's a van that I understand is picking people up and taking them. But they have to pay. You're on Social Security, you don't have a lot of money to do that with. So by the time you drive again over there and back, your stuff's getting warm, especially with the weather here of late. I see no reason that the town of Crew, Burkeville, and Nottoway County can't have one grocery store. And I will tell you, I have contacted some of the grocery companies. They'd be more than happy to come to Crew if we can find a property. Well, I'm here to tell you right here and now, I've got six properties, two in the town of Burkeville, four in the town of Crew, and one in Nottoway County. Every landowner says, hook us up We'll work it out. We'll get that grocery store here. Now, I don't have the authority to go make contracts and deals and whatever. So I've spoken to Mr. Costin and Mr. Zudi. He's the guy that can do that. And I'm hoping that you will give him the authority or whatever it takes to get this grocery store in here. You got people that are suffering. They have different medical issues. I have a stent from my heart down to my groin. I'm a stage four colon cancer survivor. I can't have a lot of salt and sugar. So there are a lot of people in this county in the same boat. And I'm sure Ms. Simmons, working at the pharmacy, knows how much drug goes out to take care of the issues that these people are going through. Now, two years and nothing, it's, it sort of hurts me because it's telling me one of two things, either you don't care, which I'm not even going to entertain that. Mr. Vaughn, you look at me, and you're right. I said it because it could be that, but I'm not going to believe that. People do care in this county. Mm -hmm. Because I went and talked to a landowner, the toughest guy in this county, last Friday, and the word I got from him, he's got a property right down here in the main part of town, you get the grocery company, I got the property. You guys are going to have to authorize it with the zoning and hooking up the water sewer, all that. Now, I've been to the town and spoke to them last fall, and the mayor did a, a good job. He has been and tried to get a grocery store with no luck. But you can't get a big store like Giant. Trader Joe's, some of these other big stores. 
let's look at some small stores. Companies like the one over here in Cambridge, what is it, Super Value? Or an IGA, like they have in Crozet, Virginia. Or a Publix up at Brander Mill. A Kroger over here in uh, Midlow. Mr. So, Mr. Mr. Wade, could, could we're we at the five minute limit now. Could you wrap up? Okay. Could you get? But I want to get you guys to do that and give him the authority and the, to do this and get this moving along. Okay. Uh, if I got another minute or two. No, we've got, we've got a huge agenda tonight. I, I need to stick as close to this five minutes as, as we need to. We, and we've gone over a little bit now. So, okay. all right. So, th thank you. I appreciate it. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Wade? Okay, well, um, I will respond. Nothing stopping a private entity from coming into Nottoway County. If anything, we are encouraging business and nothing is, we, have, we don't have to give him the authority to do any of this. They can come, they meet with him as long as they meet the zoning, then it comes in front of the planning commissioner or us. It's, there's, we're not preventing it. I've personally spoken since I've been here in 2020 to numerous grocery stores, including neighborhood stores like Walmart. They don't, they don't see the need to come here. We can't force them to come here. But if they wanna come here, we have options, whether it's tax abatements or uh, giving them the lands, and we're not above and beyond any of that. We would have those discussions with anybody, and we have, and to this point, again, it's a private industry. So that's, we're, at, we're at their beck and call in that, and their, uh, um, their uh, studies as far as whether or not they uh, see the uh, financial feasibility to do it. Mr. Ben Green. Good evening, Chairman Rourke and honorable members of the board. Good evening. Um, Good evening. I, I stand before you tonight on behalf of my town council. Um, our former mayor, Billy Colburn, has designed a town flag for the town of Blackstone. It's been approved. And we're here to present it this evening. Billy, I, you, you were the Well, just to make brain a long, long story short, Mr. Costin often gave me a lot of kidding about the fact that he had a nice crew flag and a purple flag and a county flag. So I said, you know, Blackstone doesn't have a town flag. So I got to work with my graphic designer, came up with the design, shipped it over to the town council <laughs> and the mayor, and they graciously approved this flag, not, not paid for at town expense or county taxpayers' expense. But this is a gift. It was my parting gift to the town. I wanted to make sure that uh, I left on a good accord. Nice. So I'm hoping that y'all can find room in either the county administrator's office. We can just take down the Nottoway flag and pop it. I want to present this. Uh, I want the mayor to present this to the chair. That's all. That's nice. Thank you. It's not a bribe, but we're making it happen. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Mr. The, Mr. The, eagle, the eagle on top symbolizes Fort Pickett and the uh, Roll of Bass Sea, plus the other part of the sign, you know, the flag complements our historic district, the sign downtown. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'm grateful to the town council and the mayor approved it. Awesome. Thank you. We, uh, so I'm assuming you're done, Mr. Green, with your time? Yes, okay. Yes, All right, Mr. Colburn, Mr. Billy Colburn. I'm going to speak again. I'm going to be brief, and um, I want to state up front my name is Billy Colburn. I speak to you as editor of the Curry Record newspaper, and I am a very biased party in this topic. But as someone who has sat in these seats since May of 1990, I've got a little bit of experience and insight, and I want to stress to the public, yes, the delinquent taxes, something we do every year that's very unpopular. You approve the publishing of them. There are just some things in public service that are not popular. I watched the work session video the other night. I heard Madam Treasurer state that they don't bring in the revenue that they used to. I just didn't hear any numbers. Uh, Barbara Sanger, seven years ago in an interview with me, said, Billy, right before June 30th, uh, when the list is released, people flood into the treasurer's office to pay their bills to make sure their name is not on the list. It has never been your intent or the newspaper, and I speak on behalf of Mr. Gunner, to embarrass or shame anyone into paying their taxes. We all have had times in our lives where times were tight. I want to remind the public that the lists that are published, usually in August, or the list of delinquent taxpayers as of June 30th. Those taxes were due the first week of December. So those persons are seven months due. Now, a compl one complaint, the first complaint that's ever been made at this podium was made last month about the fact that they went to pay their balance and they were shocked by the surcharge. The state of Virginia allows boards of supervisors to enact a surcharge per line item. Whether you owe $10,000 or $50, 
there's a surcharge to offset the price, not the cost, the price of the advertising. I would submit that uh, that person who goes and pays late also gets shocked with something even worse. They get a 10% penalty for paying those taxes late. So it has been proven to be a tool, an incentive. It's a revenue collection tool. I would say, based on what I've observed in the last few months about the projects this county has, uh, I've heard your auditor for the last 33 years come up here and say Nottoway County has a high collection rate, not just on the taxes due that year, but on delinquents. And another thing, and let's face it, we've all, and anyone who says this, they're probably fibbing. People love looking at the land transfers to see who bought what and who paid how much. And some folks, not me, but some folks take great pleasure in seeing, oh, that's my arch enemy in there in the delinquent tax list. But more importantly, it is a tool. Many in the business community are like, okay, wait a minute, this person owes me 600 bucks and they're back on their taxes. We're not letting them buy anything more on credit. It's just a tool um, and nothing more. And I would strongly encourage the board before you make a decision. And first of all, whatever decision y'all make, I'm going to think highly of y'all regardless. But it needs to be a, a decision based on numbers. It needs to be a, a decision based on, one, our, and I'll just tell y'all on transparency. I live on transparency. We make about five grand a year off the delinquent taxes. The check, the check for us is about five grand. And something else we do to be transparent, and every January, we advertise ad nauseum, if you buy page ads in January, you pay half price. So if you anticipate that you're gonna be doing it, you can get half price and still assess that surcharge to the taxpayers. But whatever you just, like I said, I, I get the feeling y'all may not do it for a year, that's fine, the Curry record and crew for general will continue on, we'll soldier on one, but I would just like to see the decision based on numbers, not the fact, I heard the treasurer say, Mr. Vaughn made a point the other night, we've had one person speak in 30 some years against the taxes right here. And the treasurer remarked, quote, yeah, but they come in the office and they raise cane and then they walk out mad. That is proving that it is a valid collection tool. The word gets out. And one last question, has anybody here lately had any problems with the United States Postal Service delivering their mail on time, getting your tax bills? I'll leave you with that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Anybody had any questions for Mr. Coleman, by the way? Anybody? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sonny Abbott. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good evening. Uh, under normal circumstances, I come to you with uh, printed, uh, and I read it. Uh, tonight, <clears throat> I'm a little extemporaneous. Uh, in the month, uh, in last month, uh, in July, the school board surplused two properties. One will be handled tonight, it's going to uh, Blackstone. The other was pulled last month uh, by the superintendent of schools because <clears throat> they were, uh, I'll call it, they claimed a mistake was made. They surplus the board, school board surplus 205 East Pennsylvania Avenue. <clears throat> and when they surplused the street address, they surplus the entire set of circumstances, all of the property. Last month at the school board, they did a, what they called a surplus, or a, excuse me, an addendum to the resolution. The addendum basically listed out the newly uh, uh, certified area where the two buildings are, or about nine-tenths of an acre. And I'd read that to you, but I'm not very good at reading those kinds of <clears throat> symbols. My request to this board is to require the school board to do it all over again to repeal both of their motions. The very first one that surplus the entire property and the second one, in my opinion, that surplus only the nine tenths of an acre. If the school system wants to keep the property that has the ball fields, in my humble opinion, they need to repeal both of those motions and start over. I would hope that if, should it get to you next month and they haven't done that, that you refuse to accept 
their surplus property in crew. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Abbott? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on to the public hearings at this point now. Um, the first one on the agenda is the special exception for Mr. Frankie Williamson. Uh, Mr. Zodi, could you join us, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, board members. Uh, what we have tonight is a public hearing uh, for a special exception request on tax map number 33-7-A-1. It's located on Cottage Road and contains approximately 4.13 acres as zoned A1. Uh, the applicant, uh, Frank Williamson, uh, spoke at last night's public hearing about his, his desire to uh, receive this um, approval. Um, basically, as I said, it's all A1 district, minimum lot size of five acres. Um, the comprehensive plan does say that, says several things actually, the newly adopted one that I quoted from, but I felt it was important to mention uh, E, uh, section E of our future land use. Um, yeah, just future land use. Uh, the goal is to preserve the integrity of residential neighborhoods and encourage an adequate supply of good quality, affordable housing for all residents. Strategy 10 associated with this is to ensure um, county zoning ordinances are up to date and address current development trends and emerging construction technology. So I think it's rather fortuitous that this comes at a time when staff is looking at how we can manage growth. Um, and I, I will be coming before you soon because I want to start discussing smart growth um, regarding that. But regardless, uh, we okay. had... Mr. Zoda, could you hold on one second? Did you have... Let me see. The proposed uses... Oh, that's, that's a mistake. I already got called out by Ms. Pettis. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's inaccurate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's been... Number 12 has been stricken. Right. Okay. And then also on, under the, uh, the second, first section synopsis, it's not uh, 82.43 acres. It's just a bad week for writing a report. Um, but other than that, everything is in there. Um, I would note that uh, the site, um, the principal uses uh, production nursery, that's point 20 that you talked about. That's already been stricken. And uh, according to Ms. Pettis, uh, she wanted me to add a little bit of language. So the duplex will be a rental property under 21. Whether it is an enhancement to attract an affordable shelter opportunities is a matter of opinion uh, because it is. And lastly, on item 26, I placed no under the location and type of any fuel and fuel storage. And I put none and I can't speculate. I don't know if it's going to be um, if it's going to be solar on the on the rooftop, if it's going to be um, propane or what have you. Okay. Um, given that, we had uh, multiple speakers last night uh, to remonstrate uh, for this application. And um, speaking of which, I would like to come back to you all. Um, I don't know how we do that. If okay. we do that at, at the close of public hearing, because I found some documents today that they're alluding to I wasn't aware of before. Okay, well, we can call you up after we close okay. the hearing. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I would like to recommend approval for the application subject to the conditions below. Um, number one, the special exception is granted for a duplex located at tax map number 33-7-A1. The special exception may be revoked by Nottawa County or by its designated staff agent for failure to comply with any of the listed or amended conditions made by staff, the planning commission, and or board of supervisors. Thirdly, only a single private entrance will be allowed to supply access to the proposed duplex. And that's coming from VDOT because I always send them a copy of any um, application we get uh, for their review as well as the health department. Uh, fourth, must have uh, septic and well permits issued by the um, health department prior to occupancy and must apply for and receive a certificate of occupancy from Nottoway County building official. Okay. So in a nutshell, that's it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, board members, y'all have any questions uh, for Mr. Zodi at this point? Okay. If not, um, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing for the special exception for Frankie Williamson. All right, can I get a second? Second. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now at public hearing for the special exception for Frankie Williamson. Craig, is that Babalian? Okay, yes, sir. Please come forward. Mr. 
Chairman, member of the board. Yes, sir. Uh, I am living directly across the street, Cottage Road, from this proposed property. Mr. Zodi seems to have missed a salient factor from last night's meeting, which was that the Planning Commission voting members voted against granting this exemption. I find that very curious, and I'm very glad I attended the meeting tonight to hear that. So the voice of the community around that property was a resounding no. We're worried about our property values, and we're worried about having a tenant that may cause issues because it's a continuous flow. We would prefer a single family home, like the property is already approved for, that can be either big or small if you're worried about affordable housing. So, aside from that fact <coughs> that the Planning Commission did voted not to approve this, which I think alarming that that was left out, uh, and the neighborhood opposition pretty much universal opposition. I don't believe uh, anybody that I've spoken to was in favor of it. I would like to present those facts to the board. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Let me clarify. Thank you for calling that out. That's my mistake for not letting you know. The vote was taken. Uh, there was five no's. Um, for this, there's two abstentions and then two um, yes votes. All right. What was? What, uh, I'm sorry. What, what was the motion? You said it's. There's a motion made to reject the recommended denial mm -hmm. for, the, uh, for the application. And you said five said yes, two abstained. Uh, and two, um, two voted no, one yeah. abstention. Oh, okay. Two said no, they did not support the recommendation. <coughs> Two sit no and one abstain. Okay. Two abstain. So you had uh, nine votes last night. Is that correct? I just want to make sure I'm accurate here. Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Um, is there anyone else to hear here tonight to speak for or against the special effect? I just wanted to say I signed up, and I normally y'all have all the public speakers, and I don't know, they had three or four of those papers up here, and I didn't want to get involved with Mr. Williamson's things. I just wanted to, I don't know what they did with the paper. It was so, like four or five of them up here, so maybe they overlooked it. No, it's on uh, the delegations for the public sign-up sheet only had four speakers on it here. I was on, I signed up something that was right up here. Okay. <laughs> That's all I can tell you all. All right. John. Let me see what we got. Oh, well, we're in the middle of the public hearing right now, so yeah, let, let, right, okay, 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 all right. So any, anybody else to speak for or against Mr. Frankie Williamson's um, application here? Ms. Williamson? Yes, sir, please come forward, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Frankie Williamson. I have applied for a special exception to build a duplex on a building lot on Cottage Road. I know there was some opposition in the form of a petition, but I believe a lot of the people signed it under false pretense. Daryl Garber was telling them that the previous owner was denied a variance to build on the parcel and that I was granted a variance because I was on the planning commission and I was a part of the good old boy system. Both these statements are not true. The previous owner was never denied a variance, and I have never been compromised by my position on the Planning Commission. I believe these statements influence many of the residents of Cottage Road. I've spoken with several people on the petition today, and they verified this. Several even saying they signed the petition just to get Daryl to leave. Daryl also said that if I'm on the Planning Commission, that I should not be allowed to be a contractor in Nottoway County. Diversity is what makes up the Planning Commission. I've been in Nottoway County for 58 years and in construction for 40. 
I've always worked hard and tried to treat everyone fair and respectable, and I don't appreciate the way my name was slandered last night. I've been on the Planning Commission since March 2016 and have never voted on any issue that concerned me. Not a Ways Comprehensive Plan says we need affordable housing and a duplex gives two families a place to live using less agricultural land. I could put a 1977 single wide trailer on the lot and it would be perfectly legal, but I'm trying to put something nice on this lot. It seems some people on Cottage Road don't like the idea of renters living on their road, which seems like discrimination to me. Everyone can't afford a house and a lot on the lake, but they should not be denied the right to live near the lake and enjoy the benefits of it. Thank you all for your time. Hold on a minute. Anybody got any questions for Mr. Williamson? Okay. Uh, for complete disclosure here, ladies and gentlemen, um, as we move forward, Frank and I have had a working relationship, and um, that's, um, you know, we've done work with each other and for each other. So when it comes to any vote here or potential vote here tonight, I will abstain, and I will, and I will, I will also abstain from any discussion. So I just wanted that for the public record. And Frankie and I is in good standing as, you know, uh, contractors, but I want to make that clear to the public. So thank you. All right. Is there anybody else that wants to speak for or against um, this special exception? Okay. Last call. All right, board members, I need a motion to close the public hearing. So All right. I'll take your... Uh, Ms. Um, Shelkerton, motion, and Ms. Simmons has a second here. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, public hearing is now clear, uh, closed. Board members, y'all heard the discussions, and as I said, I'm going to abstain from that. So uh, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, can I ask a couple more questions of Mr. Zodi? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Zodi, if you join us, please. Mr. Zodi, if a... This, as I understand, so this lot is uh, a, for a single family unit. But if a single family unit is established on this parcel, could it be a rental? Yeah, we, we aren't going to, I won't say we, I will say I, um, until, we, um, ex, until we start requiring rental inspections. No, we don't do that. We don't do that any place in the county. In the, is there anything in the zoning that prohibits it? No, ma'am. Okay. None whatsoever. So, have we made similar exceptions? Uh, for, a, for others? Um, in terms of special, except, in special exception cases or? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mr. Williamson did duplex last year, and then we had a duplex last month um, up on Green Hill yeah. Road. <coughs> no, that's not true. Um, we did have a lady who came and spoke at last month's meeting. All right. All right, board members, y'all have any other questions of Mr. Zodi? I was at the planning commission meeting last night, and there were a lot of people speaking in opposition. Uh, I don't know the history of the uh, petition, uh, so I think there were several people here that had signed it and spoke, you know. I'm not familiar with the zoning because I'm just, I'm new here. So I'm depending on my senior board members to lead me through this. Uh, I know Mr. Williamson, I know Mr. Garber, I know a lot of folks that spoke last night. And the motion was made by a member of the Planning Commission to reject, and it was seconded and the vote was five to two, with two abstentions to reject the special, the variance. So, that was the Planning Commission's feeling on it. Anybody, Ms. Vaughn, Ms. Simmons, anything? 
It's a, it's a, it's a hard call. I'd like to know what the opposition is to yeah. duplexes. Blackstone has numerous duplexes. One is on Burst Street. One is on the corner of Irvin and It runs right by the school. Uh, there's another one out on 460. That's a two-story. And you never would know that it's a duplex. It's across the street from the church out there. Uh, they are in a lot of places. And they look just like, I mean, if you didn't know that two families were there, you wouldn't even know it was a duplex. So I don't know exactly what the opposition. May, may I speak to that? Yes. Okay, um, that's why it came. Um, what I did, I had to do a little digging today uh, because there's numerous references to previous BZA hearings. Um, one of them said that this is on Monday, August 24th, 2020. Um, I heard a lot of discussion last night about he was denied and whatnot. That's not true. Um, Mr. Gregory, uh, the BZA, had heard this uh, this particular issue, and there was members of the audience in attendance, if I'm not mistaken. But there there was an issue about whether or not this um, this was a, a legal lot, and the board, the BZA, um, were concerned with how survey did not know how large or how small the new division would be. Mr. Gregory had been reluctant to hire a surveyor up to this point. Mr. Gregory made a motion to table the request. He stated that if and when a survey is produced showing the size of the proposed parcel, the BZA would reconsider the request. Mr. Daniel uh, McDaniel provided a second and motion passed unanimously. So between then and August 23rd, 2021, Mr. Gregory decided to sell this parcel to Mr. Williamson. And Actually, it was reviewed and approved by Mr. Procise on March 25th, 2021. I got this from the clerk of the court today. Now, let's go to the Monday, August 23rd, 2021 meeting. That was also Mr. Costin's first evening. And this really boils down to the Bird Act from 1932, where the state um, basically had to the rural counties in the state could not afford to maintain the roads. Step, the state stepped in and took control of the roads, okay? Now, Mr. Costin, they asked his opinion, and Mr. Costin spoke up, and like I've always told you all when, when it's pertinent, when you have a public right-of-way bisecting a road, you're creating a separate lot. That lot may not meet minimum lot standards, the five acres that people were complaining about last night. And it's 4.13 acres, let's be clear. But what, is, what we have is a legal pre-existing non-conforming lot. We have a lot of pre-existing non-conforming lots throughout the county. And for me as a planner, having to explain that they can, you know, they can build there, they can put a house there, but you better meet setbacks. You have to meet the setbacks. And setbacks for a um, s single family, well, just for any use, for residential use is 100 feet from the edge of the right of way, 200 feet along the road, and then they have to meet 75 foot setback uh, to the rear, and I believe it's uh, 50 to the side, and the accessory structures can be 10 to 15 feet from the side. So Mr. what Mr. Williamson's burden is going to be, if it's approved, he's going to have to meet those setbacks, and that'll be demonstrated on his zoning permit as well as his building permit application. But I did just want for clarity and transparency, this is where we are now. We have a legal existing lot of record. Okay. Pre existing. Th well, was he rejected because of the setbacks? The, I, I dare speculate. From what I heard, it was because Mr. Gregory allegedly did get the opportunity to use that house, uh, use that lot as a residence, mm -hmm. to build a residence there. Mm -hmm. But that's a moot point. It should never have gone to the BZ in the first place. It never should have. And staff was derelict in their duties, I'll be honest, in not pointing that out, the Bird Act. And because you have that right to, you have a parcel that was cut in 
not in half, but it was de facto um, divided by the placement of the road there. So I view it as an administrator. This is a pre-existing lot of record. It's a legal lot. Does it meet the minimum lot size? No. But that's by no fault Mr. Gregory's or Mr. Williamson's. It is what it is. All right. Thank you, Mr. Zodi. All You're right, welcome, sir. All right, board members, at this, at this time we need to move the meeting along. So either we need to put a motion on the floor to approve or deny or move on to the next item. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to um, approve the application with special exception uh, subject to the conditions recommended by staff. All right. That motion. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any more discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And I abstain. I'm abstaining. Okay. I don't know enough about it. Okay. That's two abstentions for the record. That is my, myself and Mr. Ingram and uh, three eyes and no nose. So school surplus property. All right. All right, board members, you have had in your package the, um, the item that is before you on June 8th, 2023, the Nottawee County School Board voted to surplus real property located in Blackstone, addressed at forward 6 South Harris Street, and further identified as parcel 50A331J1. Um, the uh, county administrator met with Superintendent Grimes and Ms. Meyer and confirmed the entirety of the property. Subsequently, Town Manager Vinobic as to as the town is willing to take possession of the property desired to demolish the one-story building. The issue has been ongoing for several years and concerns now seem to have been addressed, such as the use of the property by the school system for temporary mobile classroom placement. Following the board's action to accept the property, the deed of conveyance from the school system has been prepared and executed. Recordation is pending currently. Uh, the scheduled public hearing is required before public property is released to any party, in this case, the town of Blackstone. Once the deed from the school property, oh, I'm sorry, my, my screen messed up here. Um, what was the motion? Yeah. Well, yes, we need to go ahead to get have a motion to go to uh, public hearing. I so move. Need a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now at the surplus property public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak for or against surplus, surplus on this property? from the county to the town of Blackstone, for or against. Mr. Green, please go forward. Mayor Green. I would, uh, I would just make myself available if you had any questions okay. from the town. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Green, Mayor Green? No. Thank you for your right. consideration. Thank you. Um, anybody else to speak for or against the surplus of this property? Okay, I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Public hearing is closed. Board members, um, uh, does anyone have a suggested motion? I'll do it. Okay. I move to convey to the town of Blackstone property located in Blackstone addressed as 406 South Harris Street and further identified as parcel 50A33111. Understanding such conveyance stipulates a reservation of use for the Nottaway County School Board for temporary sites to place temporary structures on mobile classrooms with utility connections provided by the town of Blackstone at the town's expense. Can I get a second? I second that motion. All right, board members, just for clarification, um, when Mr. Ingram read that, he said 111, that's 1J1, one I believe. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying? I have my glasses on. J, okay. yes. So does your motion stand as 58? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, with the motion stand, Mr. Ingram, is the parcel 50A331J1? Yes, sir. Your second stand, Mr. Vaughn? Yes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Blackstone. Thank you. And just some more money for y'all to spend. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Next item is the uh, public hearing for the crew boundary line adjustment. Um, let me pull this up here. All right, here we go. All right, board members, y'all had it in your package. Is there anything we need to discuss prior to opening the hearing? All right, with that, I'll take a, I'll need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. 
second. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Public is hearing for the crew boundary line adjustment is now open. Is uh, Miss Rhonda Ware? Um, she, hey, Miss Ware, how you doing? Please come forward, please. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I just have a couple of points. Do not take any pictures of me. I have not had a shower. <laughs> <laughs> You can't see the odor. <laughs> I am a crop and cattle farmer and crew. My property taxes are huge. I'm getting to the age that those bills mean a lot for me to be able to slow down. I'm not against the, I know what the town and crew is trying to do. I'm fine with that. But I have 34, 36 acres right there that are beans and corn. I don't want to pay crews taxes. I don't think, I think I should at least get five years of free taxes from the town of Crew because this was not my choice to be that 30 some acres be put in the town of Crew. Right. My tax bill is, is large enough and um, I won't be using any of the services that Crew would provide. So that's all I have to say. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Anybody got any questions for Ms. Ware? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ware. Uh, John, shoot. <laughs> How you doing, sir? Good evening, boy. Good evening. How are y'all today? Good. Uh, I've got some maps here that I'd like to give you. If yes, sir. You don't mind, it'll help with some of my, uh, my concerns. I think I got them. Okay. There's two, one's for the crew, and then the other one's maybe the other day. Thank you. I, uh, I was up here, I think, last month talking about some concerns I had about the, uh, the boundary line adjustments. and. Uh, when you look at the map I gave you, the, uh, the red outlined area there is a segment of the boundary line adjustment. It's actually the Nottoway Correctional Center and the Commonwealth of Virginia land. The areas you see with the yellow dots, the... Uh, and Mr. Shute, if you don't mind, just for clarification, you're on the first sheet, correct? First yes, sheet first sheet, okay. the one for crew. Yes, sir. Uh, so the yellow dots, that represents the first two houses there are uh, both, both my, my homes. The second one belongs to my uh, sister, and I think the <coughs> son is back here. And then the other two dots behind it are part of my family farm. So uh, when I was going through all these boundary adjustments, obviously I have concerns that the town of Crewe would be straight across the road from me. And whatever the town of Crewe decides to do, you know, regarding that land and ordinance and so forth would affect me. In, in some form of fashion, but in doing these, because, you know, I'm in the other one, too, so I noticed that the, uh, the main transmission line comes straight through that property. That uh, the line in blue mm -hmm. is a transmission line, and I believe that's an interstate transmission that goes through multiple states. So that opens that area up for significant significant solar development. Uh, that area I've outlined there is roughly 400 acres. And so my concerns are that with no solar ordinances at all on any books, whether it be the, uh, the county or the town of Crew, where does the property owner's voices around this, how are they going to be heard if the boundary adjustment is allowed without any kind of uh, ordinance regarding solar development because, because obviously there's a map somewhere of this transmission line that goes through the whole county. I've heard of it before. Uh, I haven't personally seen it. So my concerns are that there's no restrictions today on any kind of solar development or stipulations regarding it. So how is landowners are our concerns going to be addressed should they go forward with the boundary line adjustment because literally half the road I'll be 20 feet away from this and you see there's a wooded area when you follow shoot road there uh, that wooded buffer was left there on purpose because the shoot family and that see the shoot the shoot zone all the way over to Dogwood Road to Ellis Mill Road not Dogwood I'm sorry 
So that's all part of that family farm. And we were adamantly opposed in the 80s when that thing was built. Uh, Mr. Vaughn remembers a little bit of some of that discussion regarding the run around those things. So we do have concerns about it. They have a nice buffer there. We don't have to, you know, I can see it, but it's not a big concern. It's been there for a long time. So those are my concerns with the boundary line adjustment is development such as solar, uh, uh, where our concerns are going to be heard as, you know, I'm still going to pay taxes in Ottawa County. I won't be part of the town of Crewe, so I can't go to the town of Crewe and say, well, if you come up with some kind of solar plan that I don't like it, I'll just have to live with it, whatever it is. So I appreciate you for listening. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mortimer, do y'all have any questions? Mr. Sheet, I'll let you know we're working on a solar ordinance right now. Okay. And I think it would address what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, we haven't passed it yet, but we're working on it. Okay. And uh, I think it'll be fair for all citizens. Okay. All Mr. Right. Mr. Shute, just for clarification, the, the entire lot in the red, that is DOC, is that correct? Uh, well, the, uh, the little square you see to the right. Yes, sir. That is Commonwealth of Virginia. Okay. Uh, property. I'm not exactly sure what they use it for, but it goes just about all the way up to the crew town limits, I think. Okay. Is that correct? All right. So, all right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shute. Uh, Slugger Morissette? He left. He left. Okay. Well, that's, well, that's where he signed. Okay. Oh, I see it now. Okay. Is there anybody else here to speak for or against this boundary line adjustment for the town of Crewe? Mr. Mayor, please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. I just want to uh, give you a quick update on the uh, Town of Crews meeting on uh, Monday, August the 14th. Uh, the Town of Crews did meet. We held a public hearing on the same boundary line adjustment request. Um, that comes after uh, many months of work, uh, including uh, working with the CRC on developing a map uh, that, the, uh, that the board has in front of them, uh, meeting with various stakeholders, uh, creating uh, meets and bounds with our uh, um, uh, 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 surveying form, uh, various other planning, sending uh, certified letters to, uh, to property owners, all the, uh, all the work that goes with, uh, with that with over, uh, over several months. Uh, at the public hearing on, uh, that we had on Monday, we had one uh, individual speak, um, neither in favor nor against, but simply just asking questions about, the, uh, about it. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, we answered his questions uh, to the best of our ability. Um, uh, and following the public uh, hearing, council voted unanimous, uh, unanimously to approve the, uh, the boundary line adjustment. And I, uh, I would uh, humbly request that the, uh, the board do the same. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Okay. And you said that was unanimous, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Board members, do y'all have any questions, Ms. Mayor Miskovic? No. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, okay. Last call. Anybody else to speak for or against? the boundary line adjustment for the town of Crewe. All right, board members, I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The public hearing is now closed. Well, board members, you've been hearing it for almost two years. What's your pleasure? I don't have a motion in here. Okay, you're looking for the motion? Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Yes. You got it? Oh, he's got it. Oh, okay. And see, they, they get hard copies and we get electronics and we lose it. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> I move to approve the boundary line adjustment agreement with the town accrued before us this evening and direct staff and legal staff to take those steps necessary to implement this decision to include but not limited to filing and the appropriate court. All right, we got a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. All right, any more discussion, board members? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, next item is the Burkeville boundary line adjustment. All right, board members, before we get into this, I had spoken to Mayor Welch um, prior to their meeting this evening. And unless there's something different, um, the attorneys here and I believe that they want to defer. Is that correct? Mr. Zanis-Tyler, do you mind coming forward? 
Zanus, right, Zanus Talent. Yes, okay, all right. Good evening. It's good, good to evening. see you all again. I may have just a few minutes, even less time. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good evening again. My name is Zanus Talley with White Bird Taylor Preston, based in Richmond, Virginia, and here tonight on behalf of the town of Burkeville. Uh, Mr. May uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you had it right. Uh, the, the, the mayor has asked that I come here this evening to present uh, two options to the board. We humbly request that this body approve the uh, boundary line adjustment uh, that has been presented before it at its July 20th meeting um, uh, and has been noticed, as you all know, um, required by state law and received a public hearing and is back before this body for final determination. However, if this body does find that uh, this the current form agreement, and there are some form considerations that need to be changed to it, and then the town does ask that you defer this meeting to your first board meeting in October in order to rectify those form amendments to it in order to accommodate the mere publication changes or some that may be uh, further entitled uh, by council for the, for the county. And that's, that's, a, that's a humble request of the town of Burkeville. And you're okay. answering your questions if you may. Board members, y'all have any questions? All right, uh, Mr. Talley, just for clarification, I, I think this board um, may want to consider um, canceling this public hearing because y'all are going to pre present new substantive data to us, which may change what we went to public hearing for and advertised. Therefore, we would be advertising something. Uh, in other words, we will be presenting, voting on something different. So basically, I understand it's a deferment, but we need the different documentation anyway. So all we have to do is just cancel tonight's meeting, and then y'all, once y'all get the definitive documents, just give them back to us, and we can advertise for a public hearing. And October would be the date if y'all get them to us between now and then. If I may, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. so the, the the town council this evening approved the agreement that you all were presented with at the July 20th meeting. No additional changes or whatnot would mm -hmm. be made to that agreement. So what you had at the July 20th meeting, uh, 20th meeting, which you approved for public hearing, which was noticed properly, mm -hmm. is exactly what the town of Burkeville is asking you to prove tonight. So there will be no substantive changes as it relates to that particular agreement, and we believe it is within the statute that it's ready to be proved if you all deem it so necessary this evening. So there will be no substantive changes to it. Mm -hmm. the, the council this evening voted to approve the agreement as was presented to you all on July 20th in which you all approved to move toward public hearing. Okay, because there was, um, when I spoke to the mayor <coughs> last week, he told me that they were pulling additional properties out. That would change. That would not change. So the, the, the current map that you all received on July 20th, which you approved to set for a public hearing notice properly, had the public hearing is before you again tonight, is the exact same agreement the town of Burkeville is asking you to approve this evening. There would be no parcel changes or anything of the like that would be changing to the map and the agreement as it stands today. Now, there are some considerations that we understand from the county's attorney uh, that, that as it relates to the form of the agreement, but the, ba the, boundary mount, the boundary line adjustment map, the parcels that would be uh, seeking to be adjusted here would not change. So you properly noticed to the effect of parcel owners hold, held the public meeting uh, hearing on that particular agreement and is here before you again this evening for final decision. Okay, would just, uh, board members, just, just, just for my take, uh, the, some discussions that I've had, and, and I don't want to be accusatory to any of the elected officials there, it, it's, it's been different conversations. I would be more in favor of uh, canceling this advertised meeting tonight and then letting them give us the definitive documents and then we can re-advertise and represent the agreement as well. And completely understand, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll just reiterate one more time that you have the final document. What was presented to you in the July 20th meeting is what you have before you tonight. It's the same agreement that you all presented, noticed the properly held the public hearing on, and is again before you for final decision. So we recognize, and I think the mayor has communicated with you before, uh, and other members of the council, if I'm not mistaken, even sometimes on the side of the road, uh, about some changes that were potential to happen to it in order to address some concerns from citizens. Uh, the council, recognizing those concerns, voted to approve the agreement that was presented to you on July 20th, which you approved for public hearing notice properly, and is here before you again this evening for final okay. decision. Okay, are the minutes from tonight's meeting available? From tonight's meeting? Or they oh, the town meeting? council's yes, meeting. Yes, sir. I, I don't know if they're exactly available at this particular moment, um, uh, but as their council, I can inform this body that it has voted to approve the agreement that was presented before you in the July 20th meeting. Because, I mean, just, just, just for me, 
I, I try to move cautiously in Absolutely. something like this. I want to help Burfo. I really do. Absolutely. But and I need the documentation to make an informed decision for and you, me. You have the documentation. But I mean, like the minutes from tonight or something like that. I mean, I, I don't understand why this is being rushed. Um, and and, and, and the, the, the town, if I may, I didn't mean to yes, interrupt sir. you, Mr. Chairman. The town recognizes that there was some confusion at the last minute here and that the, the county, the council has, has approved the, the, the agreement that was presented before the July 20th meeting. The town recognizes that and in response of that is willing to request, if the board should be amenable to it, a deferral to your first October here uh, um, board meeting on the agreement as presented. And so when you hear that agreement in October, it will be the same agreement that was presented to you in July which you all approved to move forward on a public hearing. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll make that uh, simply as a, as an, uh, um, uh, a counsel to the, yes, to, yes, the, to the town. I received two calls today, one from the mayor and one from a council member of Burglar. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My information was to delay yes. until October. Yes. So that's what I'd like to see done. Right. I agree, but it's just, it's just how we do it. Because, Ms. Vaughn, one, one of the things I've, I have concerned about, and this is why I didn't really want to get into this, because I don't want to seem accusatory, but not at all. You know, there's some FOIA concerns, because the mayor walked out of a meeting and said this meeting is over. That meeting was essentially adjourned, and then they tried to continue tonight's meeting. Is the vote even legal from tonight? We, 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 well, we believe it is. Okay. That's our <laughs> we believe it's within the statute for them to continue their not adjourned meeting and to move forward the vote as they, as they did. But in either effect, uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, if it's advisable for this body, if it believes it's right, we believe you may, you, we should request, and we do so request if you believe it's right, to have this uh, uh, proposal heard at your first October meeting and a deferral of that um, to that particular meeting. All right. Um, the, uh, this is um, the uh, our legal counsel here. How you doing? I'm good. Yes, ma'am. Do you mind stepping here so make sure we can hear you? As Thank you. As the town attorney tonight, um, and, and I just wanted to, or not the town attorney, I apologize, the You're county's fine. attorney. You're fine. Um, I just wanted to clarify when, when we are talking about the agreement, does the language of, are, are we just talking about the language or does it also include the map? and the meets and bounds. That's what I understood, that it's the maps and meets and bounds, which is the what the mayor told me last week changed. They plucked four or five properties out of it, which is a different document than what we went to public hearing for. So my concern is if we just cancel tonight's public hearing and y'all represent to us, we can get that stuff and notice this up and have the public hearing in October. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone was clear on exactly what was being considered. Okay. So that Thank you. Okay. Yes. The, the town recognizes that and will simply say and request again that this body defer this public hearing, defer decision on this public hearing for this particular boundary line adjustment to its October meeting where it can reconsider, where it can consider with full detail, and I'll provide the minutes to you of the council's vote this evening, that it has approved and you'll have the exact same agreement that they approved right. this evening. Well, well if I can't, ma'am, let me, let, can I ask you another question? And I'm sorry, what was your name? And I, I so apologize. I, sh I should have been. Um, I should have brought cards. But okay. I don't have any with me. No, I'm Heather. I'm Heather Hayes Lockerman. Heather, yes, ma'am. Um, Sans Anderson, and we represent you all. Yes, ma'am. Um, and so, based on the information that I have, that you all have, there is some confusion mm -hmm. about the western boundary line mm -hmm. of what you all were presented with in June. And so, when we're talking about the agreement, <coughs> That is an essential part of the agreement. So the language, the lawyers can wordsmith it. Right. But if what's attached to it, if if you all have concerns about it, that may have, I don't know. I don't have the facts, but Are that may have changed. And so if you move forward on the current, on the agreement from mm -hmm. June 20th, mm -hmm. that's a part of it. And so that may not be accurate based on what you all have So learned. that's the question I have for you. Do we defer or do we cancel tonight's meeting? Um, so you can defer tonight. Um, you can reopen the public hearing in September when you have more information and at that point in time you can cancel it um, or you can cancel it now or you can defer it again. So I mean this those are all options for you. It's whatever makes you all 
Well, and, and I guess that's, that's my whole point here. I, there's, there seems to be some confusion, and I understand what M Mr. Talley is saying, but there clearly seems to be a total disconnect in what the mayor told me, that there's different documentation. That's why I feel like it's best if we cancel tonight's meeting and just let them get us the definite document that's not moving anymore, and this we can advertise in September for another public hearing in October, which still aligns. I just feel it's safer because we've advertised with different documentation. Right. All right, so board members, can I have a motion to either defer or cancel? Mr. Chairman, I move to cancel tonight's public hearing related to the Burke Pool um, boundary line adjustment. I second. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And Ms. Mr. Talley, we, we want to get Burke Pool where they need to be. I mean, you understand, I just had this concern about I don't want to end up in a legal battle because Lord knows we all got enough. So I don't want to end up in another legal bout if we can prevent it and just have definitive documentation come forward. And we'll gladly go to public hearing and help Burkeville any way we can. And, and Burkeville does graciously thank this board for its continued And the time frame is still matter. the same. Time frame is, we're still on for the same time frame that they want. The October you mean, you mean the October meeting? Yes. Got it. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate it greatly. Thank you, members. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, board members. So as you hear the... Uh, uh, public hearings for the BLA is uh, we have nothing under presentations tonight. Departmental reports. Um, Miss uh, um, um, Bryant is not here tonight, and I, I believe this gentleman's coming to talk to us. Is that right? And, and forgive me, sir. I I got the email, but I don't have it in front of me. So please, if you don't mind, Mr. Get Chair, members of the board. Good afternoon. I do happen to be a little bit taller than Miss Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Aaron French. I'm the maintenance operations manager in the Petersburg residency. For those of you I have not had the pleasure of meeting yet, I also happen to be a member of, or a resident of this fine county. Um, I'll start off with a couple project updates this evening and then move into some maintenance things. Okay. Um, the bridge replacement project for Route 624, Cary Shop Road, um, it was originally scheduled for spring of, well, it was originally scheduled for fall of 23. It has now been moved to spring of 24. Um, let's see, the Route 46 bridge deck, that project is still ongoing. The bridge deck demolition is underway on that project. Uh, the Route 611 project is complete. Um, road was opened on July 21st. I believe that was the one they were moving the silt um, from the structures on that road. Um, we wrapped up our secondary mowing cycle in the county, I believe it was last week. Um, and the McCune Road, we did some patching on that road, cleaned up a couple potholes. Um, Started to work on some tree trimming issues, got one addressed on Route 723 on Lewiston Plank. Um, our tree trim equipment had to go to the shop uh, for some blade sharpening and it's taking longer than expected, um, but that equipment should be back online by the end of the week and we will begin tackling out um, some tree trimming work orders that we have as well as some regular maintenance activities. That is all I had. What can I do for the board this evening? Okay, y'all got any questions? Mm, no. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate your Sorry. patience and uh, uh, getting that report to us. And um, of course, we're here to work with you guys any way we can. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Have a great evening. All right, thank you. All right, board members, um, items three, four, five, and six on your departmental report are all in your package. Do, do we have any questions or concerns or any of those? Okay. Um, not we County School Board. Uh, Miss Martin is here tonight. I, you going to join us, man? <laughs> All right. Y'all been busy doing anything? Nothing yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, Dr. Grimes is out this evening, so she asked me to speak on behalf of the school system to give you an update as to where we are with a couple of things. Um, so Monday we held back to school convocation for our staff. It was a great way to kick off this upcoming school year. Uh, we're, we're excited to welcome our staff back to get another year under our belts. Um, and we are very appreciative for the welcome addresses by Mr. Uh, Rourke and our chairman, uh, Mr. Rowe. And also our speaker was Robert Jackson this year who is an educator um, and he really spoke to us about understanding our why and motiv motivating us for our work with our students for this upcoming year. Um, Monday was pretty jam-packed for us in the school system because we went from that to our back-to-school parking lot party. This is the second year that we've held our parking lot party for all of our NCPS families. 
Um, we like to think it was a huge success. We probably had over a thousand people there, and the guys that were cooking hot dogs will tell you they cooked over 1,200 hot dogs. So Jesus. I think <laughs> it was probably a huge success. But it was great to see our schools all come together um, and our community come together in one location for our families and let them know that we're a partnership, that we really want to work together, and that we value our families and our community. Um, our goal of Another goal that we have with it is to promote students wanting to be in school. So at our back school parking lot party, every single child from pre-K through 12 gets a shirt with their graduation year on it. They got one last year. They got one this year. The pre-K shirts are the cutest. They're just, you know, <laughs> those tiny shirts. But every single child comes to school with a shirt that says what year they're supposed to graduate from Nottaway. Um, we've also been busy this week with training and, of course, prepping for Monday. Monday is the first day of school, and so we look forward to welcoming over 1,700 kids back to all of our schools across the division. Um, and finally, I wanted to share with you, we have a new app. We've redone our website. We have an app because um, everybody has this device with them all the time. So it's right in our parents and our families and our community pockets. Um, it gives pretty much instant information to parents. Our menus are posted there. It's kind of the one-stop shop for the school system. So we're excited to promote that. Our teachers will also be using it for communication as a tool this year. Um, so we're looking forward to continuing to roll that out across the school division. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, and, and thank you all for in inviting me. I thoroughly enjoyed that. It's one of the most nervous speeches even though I had written it that I've ever given so I mean but but we're glad to do it do y'all have any questions or comments for Miss Martin mm -mm. Right. No. Thank, you. thank you thank, thank you, you so you. much okay um, so, so, so. emergency service is buddy here oh there he is over here you he switched spots on me man <laughs> mr. chair members of the board good evening sir uh, good evening good evening also uh, staff and citizens I yeah, switched up. I had only standing room only when I arrived. Um, just a few highlights. The uh, packet, again, has my report in it. Just a real quick for you, because I know you're moving along. Uh, we facilitated a meeting on the Public Safety Radio Committee. We went through three vendor proposals, took a look at those as a review committee. Again, all public safety discipline was involved in those uh, fire, EMS, and law enforcement. So by August the 25th, um, we're going to be submitting our questions, concerns, and, and anything of that nature to the company that's helping us CTA. So that's our next step is to do that before we ever get into price proposals. So uh, we're moving right along on schedule. The other thing we did, and this is a really good moment, um, the state um, office of EMS has a state regulation that says you have to have an operational medical director for every EMS agency and licensed uh, in Virginia. So we have four in the county, Blackstone Volunteer Fire Department, Crew Volunteer Fire Department, Burkeville Volunteer Fire Department, and also Nottaway uh, Emergency Squad. We have come together, and in our theme of working together, all four agencies will now have the same OMD as a primary OMD. They all agreed upon picking, and I'm happy to report tonight that uh, he's going to be starting with us on October the 1st under a one-year contract, and that's Dr. William Eggleston, who's actually uh, our, one of our local family physicians over at Blackstone Family Practice. This is exciting because the fire and EMS chiefs and myself, when we all got together, we were using a person that was doing a really good job out of the metro Richmond area. So we like, like bringing that to a local uh, physician. And he's going to be more available for us. We're going to get more training involved with him as, as well. So we're looking for some really good things. You know, Dr. Eckerson's a young doctor, um, and we're looking forward to him, you know, being in the Blackstone area in Nottoway County. And, and we're going to move this meeting with him around once per quarter since we have four agencies that are licensed. We're going to go to each one of the four agencies per quarter and to complete his year out. So looking forward to that. Uh, July 23 was a busy grant month. Um, I'm working currently on, on six, over six grants for the county uh, for emergency type events. Um, we obviously, and, and I've briefed you on those before, but we did receive a $5,000 grant, no match, from the Virginia Office of EMS. And what that's going to do is allow us to put a CAD integration system in place to where all of our responders automatically get the times, the addresses, et cetera, populated in their call sheets just by the push of a button from dispatch. So that's something that will probably save them 10 minutes per call sheet when they're filling that out. The, uh, the next thing is just basically today I communicated with the Department of Justice 
on that $1 million grant that we were awarded uh, for the communication system that we're working on and, and will you know, come to fruition in, two, in another two years. That $1 million is secure. Uh, I asked them, did they have to have any other paperwork at this time? They said no. Um, so they're going through different steps, but uh, I had a good rapport with that person today. Uh, and we're just waiting for their next step to ask us to fill out. The other item we had uh, that I wanted to bring to your attention is I met with Social Services, Shannon Reed, Director, and her staff of four supervisors on, um, on just a few days ago. And what we did is we got together and planned for this trailer that we received on a grant. It's outfitting this trailer so that we can go to any one of the shelters in a mobile setting. We're still going to have a stationary storage at Berkeley Elementary, but this trailer will allow us to go to Blackstone Primary or Crew Primary if we need to do that. We'll already have it loaded, so um, that's going to help us on deployment time if we have to open a shelter during a disaster. And that was a very good, that was a no-match grant as well. We went over, speaking of no cost, to the county, we went over this week to the LRA, and you remember back when the contractors were building Fast C, they had little small refrigerators and microwaves they were using within those dormitories. They are in surplus now. So we went ahead and earmarked about six of those so that we can have two refrigerators per shelter for people to put their meds in when they come to the shelter. Um, also the microwave in case someone needs to heat something up. Again, no cost to the county uh, at this point, and uh, we'll put those in storage, and we'll put two on the trailer so that we'll have that deployed with the cots and all the other things. So we were excited about that. We really thank the LRA and Shane Hawkins. He's doing a great job of getting those items to us at no cost. We also identified um, the Officers Club at Fort Barfoot uh, that's in the LRA property, as you know, as a family assistance center location or a joint information center location or a joint field office location for FEMA in case they ever need to do this in a large disaster. We didn't want to guess where they would go. So the two places that we know that we can go to are the Officers Club and the Burkeville Elementary School. We also looked at the LRA office that they just vacated when they moved to the old planning office. That also on Quartermaster Circle allows us to have, you know, three locations that we can actually go turn the switch on, fire the computers up, and FEMA or VDAM can go to work right here in Nottoway County if we need them in a disaster. And then last but not least, I had the honor of attending uh, Hunter Byers Memorial at the, at the uh, Nottoway Complex, uh, Middle School Complex Auditorium. Uh, very touching ceremony, d done very well by Nottoway Emergency Squad and Blackstone Volunteer Fire Department. We also had the honor of going out on Sunday on the street right by Heritage Hall, and we sat in the parking lot, and we all had a procession acceptance of uh, apparatus from Nottoway County and some surrounding departments. We lined up that parking lot, and there were some other spots within Nottoway, within Blackstone, that we received the procession for Firefighter Coles that was uh, born and, and uh, raised in Cambridge, and, and they came through with a motorcade. Yes, sir. So um, but that's all I have. Any questions of me tonight? Thank you. Y'all have any no. questions? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Thank you. Good report. Board members, I missed something. Right before Mr. Hyde's um, um, uh, report in your package, there is a item for the school carryover, and there is a suggested motion to go to a, because of the cost, it's as the total of the two items which follow exceed one per, which follow exceed 1% uh, of the adopted fiscal budget for 23-24, we need to, in order to ex execute the request to carry over public hearing, it will be necessary. Uh, if y'all don't have it, I'll read it if someone wants to move it. Um, the suggested motion is to move the staff be directed to undertake those actions necessary to conduct a public hearing considering amendment of the adopted fiscal year 23-24 budget related to the requested carryover request of the school board of $693,905.47. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so move. I move for public hearing for $693,905.40 for the school system. Can I get a second, please? I got it. Okay. All right. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Board members, wait a minute. We got to give a date for that. 
that would be the September board meeting. Yeah. Sorry, folks. I'm going to pull my calendar up here. You said September. It would be okay. so September 21st. September 21st. Uh, I made my motion for September the 21st, 2023. Public hearing. Ms. Vaughn, is your second stand on that? Mm -hmm. I recall the vote on this to uh, with the date for the public hearing of September 21st, 2023. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? There we go. Sorry, folks. That I missed that. Okay, next we have uh, Mr. Zodi. All right, thank you again. Um, it's going to be unusual. I, I want to take a moment to thank um, sheriff, um, the sheriff and the town um, police force. There's a shooting on my street, um, literally right across the street from me um, on Sunday night. And within five minutes after my neighbors and I went back inside with our side arms, um, the sheriff's the deputies rolled up. Uh, four deputy uh, squad cars came in and then two town police. And it's just remarkable how quick their response was on Jerry Road and Cole Harbor subdivision. So first, I just wanted to say thank you so much to the sheriff and his staff for helping us out um, and being there on time and responding as such. Okay, um, I wanted to let you all know that I did uh, submit the uh, American Revolution 250 grant. I can't say enough about Peggy Figler and Greg Eanes, uh, their contributions. It was always a last minute thing. Uh, secondly, um, we also submitted the Petco grant, again with the assistance of Not Away Cares, and that was submitted at the end of last month. Again, who knows how long that'll be before we get that. I'm gonna bring a grant, not a grant proposal or anything, uh, but I, for our EDC next week, actually one grant uh, for brownfields and whatnot, and some remediation, because I think Cox Lumber could use that you know, maybe look at Cox Lumber or something, but I'll bring that to the EDC next weekend uh, for River Street Network updates. I have, the only thing I have are, are that they're building 100% uh, um, there um, at the sites that they pre-located, the three sites I'd mentioned earlier in the year. And um, the, it's just a matter of getting bids, then it's a matter of getting bids um, should be out the end of the quarter for construction in Nottoway County. And then, of course, should be the end of this month. So I believe that's about it. And, oh, I, I promised to bring you all the information on the destination marketing organization through the Virginia Tourism Corporation. And um, I'll bring that as well to our meeting um, because that's, that will ha allow us to have slogan promotional events and whatnot uh, because we don't have such a thing at this time. And I think it would be really good. PR basically while we're paying the state to we're paying the state to help us with public relations. Sure. Okay. okay, and that's that's all I have for you all. Oh, I do have if I can I don't want to step I'm on getting your... ready to ask. Yes, sir. Well, we had just a little conversation um, Tuesday night um, at the Planning Commission, well the ZOC, the Zoning Ordinance Committee about solar. Um, what we've agreed to, and I begrudgingly agreed because I was outnumbered and they could take me in a fight, as um, Okay, we're looking at a maximum of 40 acres under panel for solar. We're also looking at 1,000 foot setbacks around the perimeter of the site. I'll fight this next one, but uh, paving the roads um, leading to the site because that's gonna lead to more impervious surface runoff and then removing that if it ever goes back to agriculture. But um, we're also looking at decompaction requirements that means you know we've heard a lot from mr mason in the past about compaction well there's also a measure we can implement called de decompaction after the decommissioning they remove the, the poles and whatnot yes, sir. Um, lastly it's going to be uh, the, the notes i have are are keeping uh, soils on site um, per dq regulations and that and being a for, former program administrator for that um, program a DEQ in Orange County, um, they're going to, they would have to submit an erosion and sediment control plan for that. Um, and we want to maintain that so when it's, when and if it's decommissioned, they have that topsoil, they can spread back over. Um, 
so I was tasked, and I, I don't know if I did something to upset Mr. Um, Ingram and the rest of the members, but um, I was tasked with bringing a draft back next month, and that's going to remove the utility scale um, facility, not farm. We don't say farms <laughs> when we're talking solar. But um, hopefully I can have a draft, and I'm going to do my darn best because I'll be out for vacation for a week. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Next month. But that's, that's all. All right. I have one more question, Mr. Zoda. Where are we uh, on Cherry Tree Lumber? Where are we? Well, we're in discussions, and we should be having an application coming in September uh, for uh, the October meeting. Now, if, they, if the property owners, because this is an interesting situation. There's a recreational lease that all the people with campers have to sign, and they have to abide by their rules. I've told them what I've wanted. I want uh, periodic pumping of the septic uh, disposal by a professional company to get rid of the uh, black tanks, to empty the black tanks and why not off-site. But all tags on the campers and the vehicles pulling them must be brought up to date. They have to, if they're going to remain there, they're going to have to come uh, before and seek a special exception. Right, and all of that will be in that application that you're talking about? That is correct. And um, Glenn Orell, he's the manager, the land manager for F&W Investments, which is a subsidiary or I guess the managing company for our favorite name, um, if they don't agree to it, the tenant, not, I don't want to say tenants, the users of the leasees, then um, F&W on behalf of Cherry Tree Timbers just ready to tell them to move on out. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to bring that, you know, in just all fairness, um, give them an opportunity to speak their piece and try to prove their case, but there's blowback. It's not a problem for them. I mean, I don't, I'm not dismissing the concerns it's caused a citizen or citizens, but I think there could be a lot of improvements if it was to go forward. I mean, from a planning perspective and, you know, a hunting license and whatnot, but there's a hunt club in the area, but not everybody's from this area. Okay. So that, I have problems with that, but okay. we'll address that later. All right. Sorry to drag right. on. No, you're fine. Thank you. Okay. Sheriff Jones, do you have anything? Okay. Ms. Watrous. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Shackleton, do you have anything on the animal shelter to update? Um, let's see. A report on what's in the package here. Okay. I think Chris Phillips, the architect uh, with RRMM, uh, had been advised about the board's decision to reissue the bid solicitation for the new shelter. And he updated the bid package with event and due dates as follows. Um, advertise, distribute advertisements to newspapers and post to EBA by August 10th. Pre-bid meeting August 24th at 11. Bids due September 12th at 11. The bid package was posted on the county website and sent to several firms, um, some not previously contacted. And advertisements concerning the bid opportunity will run in local and regional newspapers. And they were also looking to undertake a state posting. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Shelton. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, under new business, we uh, uh, J1, the reimbursement resolution. Um, Davin, Davenport and Company, as financial advisors to the board, has suggested that the Board of Supervisors adopt a reimbursement resolution which permits, under IRS rules, the county to reimburse its general funds with monies from a later tax exempt financing for the projects identified. That document, as drafted by Sands Anderson, follows. Both entities as well recommend adoption. Now, board members, y'all have that in your package. You have a suggested motion in your package. I know Davenport is here. If we have any questions, the resolution is presented there as well. Is there any, um, on the resolution for note, it says Thursday, the 16th day of August. That's just a typographical error. That's, that's Wednesday, the 16th day of August for this year. Um, what's the board's pleasure on this? Or do you have any questions for no, Mr. David Rose? Or is there anything, David, you, you think? We should, OK. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, David Rose from Davenport. Good to be here. Um, again, here to answer any questions. This is basically <coughs> um, what I'd liken to a uh, 
hunting license. Doesn't mean you have to go hunting, but you have to have the license if you're going to do it right. right. So with that said, um, what this does is to the extent that you forward and front monies for any projects before we actually do the financing, uh, if it's more than 60 days, then you're not able to reimburse yourselves if you want to do that. So that's really what this says. It gives you that flexibility. And again, um, young lady here from Sands Anderson, but uh, 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 the folks from Sands Anderson out of the Richmond office with regard to the, uh, the bonds that we do were uh, the folks that put this together. Okay. So. Happy to answer, Mr. Ron. All right. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Rose? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? Do we do have a, a, a suggested motion? And as the note said, that um, both Sands Anderson and um, obviously uh, Mr. Rose's uh, company is recommending this. Davenport is re recommending this as well. So, what's your pleasure? I'll read this motion. Okay. I move that the resolution before us this evening titled Resolution of Board of Supervisors of the County of Nottoway, Virginia, Nottoway County, Virginia, declaring its intention to reimburse itself from the proceeds of one or more tax-exempt financing of, for certain expenditures made and for to be made in connection with the public safety, E911, and animal control facility projects for the county be adopted. Can I get a second, please? I second. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Adopted. Mr. Thank Rose, you thank, you. Well. thank you so much. Um, now, before y'all on your next item, it's about the metal detecting. Um, as y'all know, we had um, uh, an individual that had approached us last, last month about it. Um, the inquiry is, does, lo does any locality have a policy, rules, or guidelines to share regarding citizens' interest in the metal detecting on county-owned property or publicly held lands under their control? And as y'all can see, the report is there from the city of Alexandria, the county of Gloucester, city of Petersburg, as well as the city of Manassas, and some state law reference, city of Williamsburg, and highlighted here, damage to property, just for note, says no person shall appropriate, excavate, injure, search for, remove, or destroy any historical ruin, monument, or area, or any object of antiquity situated in any recreational facility, nor shall any person operate on park premises, any type of electronic metal detecting device without first obtaining any written approval from the Director of Parks and Recreation, uh, and then it goes on to, into conviction there, but uh, also the city of Newport News, city of Fredericksburg, and um, the, um, let's see, where was, where was the suggested motion at? So board members, do y'all have any questions on what, what is in your package? And do y'all wish to take any action here? Because we, we defer this until next month. Okay. You you want to you? I want to talk to some people who are doing this. Okay. We, well, we don't need to take no action anyway. So we, we can just move on to the next item if y'all are okay with, de with deferring. Because, well, we're not really deferring. There's no action to be taken, Mr. Vaughn. So so we're well within our rights here. Good call. All right. We'll we'll keep it on the uh, on unfinished business for next month. Okay. The Prince Edward boundary line. All right, board, uh, board members, as y'all know, uh, Ms. Simmons and myself, along with the Commission of Revenue and Administrator Costin, met Monday via um, uh, video chat with um, Doug Stanley and the Chair and Vice Chair in Prince Edward County. We had some discussions about the boundary line, um, where it's actually at, where we, where we stand on it, <clears throat> and also... Um, um, as far as cost, when they they were inquiring about, do we want to go in halves on a survey? And I think the consensus of this board prior to that meeting was no, because we stand to lose revenue both in real estate and personal property, and the line's the line, whether you're looking at the GIS or that. So why pay for those? Um, and 
the, um, uh, just, just for note, Burke's Tavern is in Nottaway, what remained in Nottaway County um, by the GIS line. That's a historical marker. We made sure to make that a, um, a, a serious concern because part of the GIS line runs through part of the land itself and not the structure of Burke's Tavern. So that is, that is historical in Nottaway County and uh, shall remain in Nottaway County, but there's going to be um, some more conversations and some potential MOU coming for consideration for the board here within the next couple of weeks. So uh, does anybody have any questions on that or anything? you have anything you want to add from that conversation? That was about it. Okay. All right, uh, board members, I need a motion to accept uh, the uh, consent items. Move to approve the consent items. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Do we have any discussion? Anybody got any concerns for any of the items? Because it's the livestock claim for flipping, the livestock claim for more, the opioid settlement, Caterpillar financing, and July expenditures, which of course is all the funds. So, any questions? All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Correspondence items. Anybody got any questions, concerns? You have those in your package as well there. Anything reference? Anything reference? Okay. All right. We'll move on. The county administrator's report, we will um, not be conducting that tonight as, again, county administrator is not here tonight. So we're going to move on to comments from the board. Um, Ms. Simmons. No, I have nothing. Okay. Mr. Vaughn, do you have any comments? Sure. Always have something to say. Well, say it, brother. <laughs> they, that's what they put you up here for. Speak your mind, my friend. As you all know, I'm not running again for the seat. So I have not endorsed any of the three candidates that's running for my seat. I will probably endorse in September. But if any candidates are using my name in any way, I wish they would not. I want them to cease and desist and, and not say that Mr. Vaughn has supported me. That is my statement tonight. Thank you. All right. Duly noted, sir. Okay. Um, uh, Supervisor Shepperton, no. do you have anything? Okay. okay. Mr. Ingram, you had an eventful week. You got anything? I'm good. You're good. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, board members, we actually doing a little bit better on time than I thought, so I'm going to share a couple of thoughts with you, Mr. Vaughn. Good Lord, here he goes. I can hear you down in there. Ain't even got to say it. All right. So I just want to consider a couple of things for our upcoming work session. Just, I, just mold this over, okay, if you would, please. Um, First of all, there's two potential options after discussion is made on the direction for the landfill use. And consider if, if we stop burying trash to use the savings, and this is big, so use the savings and consider the option of building the grain facility mill for a new integrator to increase the potential to save our $40 million tax base that we are losing. And of course, I'm not suggesting build the building without an agreement or even before all that needs to be taken care of. But this is an investment for our agriculture base to save our farmers here. Um, there is multiple things we knew here. If, if, we, if we land this deal with the integrator and we have this grain mill here, of course, there's going to be profits increased for the local farmers because they won't have to ship so far. It's going to be more jobs. And these are higher paying jobs than what people uh, understand. Most of these uh, buildings, uh, processing plant, grain facilities, they are computer run. I mean, they are high tech, they are high paying jobs. Um, and I just, I just feel like, like I said, it is an investment in our agriculture future. We have the potential to lose 40 million total as this thing continues to move on. And um, we're gonna have some, and we'll get that clarification as they move forward with some more information from the 
uh, solid waste study as well as the Davenport study. So just I would like to have that on our um, on our uh, uh, work session potentially. The second consideration for the 80 acres land use out there, of course, again, if we don't need it, would be like could either consider selling it or allowing the Parks and Rec to develop that. You know, um, I know it's beside, it's not the ideal place, but um, beside the old landfill, but, um, you know, there is a such thing as Mount Trashmore. And, um, but this won't be on top of the trash, it'll be beside it, but it's 80 acres, we could, we could potentially do a lot of that. And speaking of the Parks and Rec, um, it's not a voting committee, of course, but I'd like to, if it's okay with the board uh, members, to reach out to the towns to ask them to maybe give us a member from each town because we don't want to get into a strategic planning event and see that the town is already working on something that we may consider working on if we have everybody in the room. Plus, it's, it's an excuse to get our uh, towns in the room with us again. And I'd like to give you all a little bit of good news from the other night's meeting as well. High Bridge Trail State Park. Mm -hmm. All right. During that meeting, um, we, we mentioned that we had put the Parks and Rec Committee back together and we would like, as one of the initial projects, to see if we could partner up with Prince Edward and see if we could strengthen any grant applications using opera funds or anything like that to get the High Bridge Trail State Park finished all the way to Burke. They were more than supportive of that. So. Good news on that front. Um, and by the way, I, I really want to encourage citizens to watch our work sessions, guys. These work sessions are being phenomenal right now. I mean, a lot of times so much information gets missed because, you know, people are, oh, it's just a work session. We, there's some good things that's moving with those. So, um, and here's one other I'd like for y'all to consider for the work session. Last thing I have here is uh, for the members to consider a buffer zone by ordinance or by policy inside of the county's border with all of the surrounding counties that is not allowable, allowable for a boundary line adjustment for the towns to expand into. Um, you know, they say good fences make good neighbors, and this further solidifies the action this board took unanimously earlier this year to not allow utilities to be ran into not away from other localities and we must protect our revenue here. So essentially, you see where it says in God we trust right on the clock. So there's your border right there. Now imagine you come in a 16th, a eighth, a quarter, a half, or a full mile. That is a basically a no-fly zone for a boundary line adjustment from any town towards the other counties. So it's just, just for consideration, we can get some, uh, um, in other words, like if a town tries to back up, they can't give another county permission to bring utilities in and circumvent the county and its revenue sources. So just food for thought. And like I said earlier, I apologize for being a, um, a rambling mess earlier during the, uh, during the ladies' presentation, but it, it, is, it is very emotional. My daughter turns 18 tomorrow, and she's leaving. <laughs> Proud of her, but I'm sad. But, uh, my family's different now. I won't have a girl. Not, not to Thanksgiving, but I appreciate all the support y'all have done um, with me and my family, knowing that she was headed towards this, and I appreciate the support from the citizenry as well. It means a lot, and um, I wish her well, and I know a lot of y'all have wished her well on her next journey here. She's anxious. She's scared, just like we all are, but she's got the tools, and she's got a good support system here in Ottawa County, and I thank you all for that. And with that, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> so, um, thank you all. I couldn't miss that. Uh -huh. Start clapping. <laughs> I saw that. I did hear that. Thank you, Mr. Moore. But that was because I was shutting up. <laughs> all right, board members, I need a motion to go into closed session. I move that the Board of Supervisors of Nottaway County, Virginia, adjourn into closed meeting pursuit to the Code of Virginia 2.2-3711A7 for consultation with legal counsel and briefing by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation, where such consultation and briefing and open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating and litigating posture of the public body, specifically regarding personnel matters and land use regulatory enforcement 
and 2.2-3711A1, Assignment and Performance of Pacific County Employee, specifically related to personnel matters now pending in county administration. Can I get a second, please? Second. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move into closed session. We will return as soon as Mr. Vaughn says I can.
Okay, board members, I need a motion to reconvene in open session. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in open session. Board members, can I get the certification for closed meeting? Certification of discussion and closed meeting. Whereas the Board of Supervisors of Nottaway County, Virginia, convene a closed meeting on this day pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. And whereas Section 2.2-3712 of the Code of Virginia, 1950, as amended, required a certification by the board that such closed meetings was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, one, on the public business matter lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law was discussed in the closed meeting to which the certification resolution applies. And two, only such business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting was heard, discussed, or considered by the board. Will each member now so certify? Okay. Um, Ms. Kelly, could you roll call the board, please? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I need a second board member. Second. Okay. Ms. Kelly, if you don't mind now. Yes. 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 Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, board members, at this time, uh, we have no action to take and uh, need a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, stay here alone.